Morning, everyone. Thank you for doing your devotions with me today. We are in Ezra chapter 6, verses 13 to 22. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you so much that we can spend this time in your word and spend this time, Lord God, just in your presence. Lord, we pray that as we seek you and seek your word, we pray that you would truly fill us with your Holy Spirit and fill us with an understanding of your message to us today, Lord God. Would you guide our thoughts and guide our attention that we may be upon you, O Lord God, and be convicted and impacted by your word today. We thank you so much that you are uh, using this time to strengthen your people. We pray, Lord God, that it would be a blessed time before you. We thank you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're in Ezra chapter 6, verses 13 to 22. Ezra 6.13, then because of the decree Darius had sent, Tetanai, governor of the trans-Euphrates, and Shethar, Bozani, and their associates carried it out with diligence. So the elders of the Jews continued to build and prosper under the preaching of Haggai, the prophet, and Zechariah, the descendant of Edo. They finished building the temple according to the command of God of Israel and the decrees of Cyrus, Darius, and Artaxerxes, king of Persia. The temple was completed on the third day of the month, Adar, in the sixth year of the reign of King Darius. Then the people of Israel, the priests, the Levites, and the rest of the exiles celebrated the dedication of the house of God with joy. For the dedication of this house was God, house of God, they offered a hundred bulls, two hundred rams, four hundred male lambs, and as a sin offering for all Israel, 12 male goats, one for each of the tribes of Israel. And they installed the priests in their division, and the Levites in their groups with the service of God at, at Jerusalem, according to what was written in the book of Moses. On the 14th day of the first month, the exiles celebrated the Passover. The priests and the Levites had purified themselves and, and were all ceremonially clean. The Levites slaughtered the Passover lamb for all the exiles, for their relatives, the priests, and for themselves. So the Israelites who had returned from the exile ate it together with all who had separated themselves from the unclean practices of their Gentile neighbors in order to seek the Lord, the God of Israel. For seven days they celebrated with joy the festival of unleavened bread because the Lord had filled them with joy by changing the attitude of the king of Assyria so they so that he assisted them in the work on the house of God, the God of Israel. Amen. What a uh, wonderful story of restoration when we see that God had, um, what God had done in the book of Ezra. It's such a beautiful story of how um, God provides for his, for his people and rebuilds and really above beyond all odds here's god using a, a gentile king to restore and um kind of give grace to the israelites and enabling them to um build up the temple again and it says what i love here is it says so the Israelites who had returned from the exile ate it together with all those who had separated themselves from the unclean practices of their Gentile neighbors. Now, these are the people who were deliberate about being separated. Now, of course, you know, you've, you've heard me say this so often. It's this deliberate act of righteousness, this deliberate act of seeking out God's holiness. And so they were set apart, right? They wanted to be different from their Gentile neighbors. Meaning that they chose not to worship the same idols that the were, that the people around them were worshiping. They chose not to assimilate in that way, right? That they were set apart. And in many ways, they were outcasts. But they were okay with that because in their hearts and in their minds, they were putting God first. And it's this great calling to us, the church, to have that willingness as well, right? To be willing to be different. To be willing to be set apart. Um, and I believe that God is calling us to have that willingness. right? And here is this wonderful story of God's restoration. And that's something that I don't want us to neglect in any way. Um, this wonderful story of how God restores the temple. 
in Jerusalem, but God restores his people. God restores the practice of Passover and um, like all these wonderful things that these Israelites had lost because they were in exile. Now they are able to be restored and you really get the sense of God's favor upon the Israelites. Um, and what that means is, right, there was forgiveness. There was grace. And it's this beautiful story of, of God's grace that comes upon the Israelites. Even when they were far from God, God showed his mercy upon them. Uh, really, I hope that you spend some time thinking about that and uh, give glory to God in, the, in asking, you know, before the Lord, Lord, you know, how, in what way are you restoring me? What is it that you are calling me to do in response to your grace today? Let's uh, make that our prayer. Let's give that some thought as we come before the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you so much, God, that you allow us, O oh Lord God, to know the gospel. You allow us to know that we are redeemed and saved by your grace today, God. That, Lord God, it is not because of our perfection. It's not because we are righteous or because we are good. But even in our moments of unrighteousness, God, it's your grace that covers us and gives us the promise of restoration. And so, Lord God, may we continue to, to, to strive to honor you and to strive to be set apart for you, God. And know, Lord God, that you hear us when we call out to you and you are restoring us and redeeming us by your grace. So we thank you, God. Help us to live out your word, live out faith today. We thank you, Lord. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me today. Have a blessed day. Okay, bye-bye.